Welcome to uh, CBK episode 15, uh, Pastor Brian's College of Biblical Knowledge. Um, this one will be a little bit different because, well, we will get into the scripture here in Hosea chapter 4, but uh, with all that's going on in our country, protests, riots, and, and everything going on, um, I need to address that. But I, I am hoping that I'm not going to do any damage and make matters worse because I'm no great expert, uh, but I do know the Bible a little bit. And so I'm going to stick to my notes a whole lot more than I normally do just because I don't want to say anything wrong. And I don't want you to misunderstand or misinterpret anything I say. Just, just know that, uh, know that that you know I'm trying to just point us to here's what God says to us in His Word. And in Hosea chapter four, um, verse one and two, it says, "Hear the word of the Lord, O people of Israel." The Lord has brought charges against you, saying there is no faithfulness, no kindness, no knowledge of God in your land. You make vows and break them. You kill and steal and commit adultery. There is violence everywhere, one murder after another. And this sounds a lot like the, the turmoil going on in our country that was exasperated because of what took place in Minneapolis last week. In Romans chapter 12, it says to rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep or mourn with those who mourn. And, and now is a time to mourn in our country. I, I don't need to recount for you the story that's been in the news everywhere about what happened a, a week and a half ago. It, it, it was wrong, of course. I mean, nobody is defending uh, what those police officers did. Nobody's defending that. It's wrong. It's totally wrong. The uh, Sweet Home uh, police chief had a, had a great statement uh, about just yesterday about, uh, about this issue. And, and there is so much I don't know, I, I, and so much I don't understand. I'm no great expert on race relations or anything like that. What I do know is, is that this is a tragic event, and it is highlighted and, and given life because we are in an instant news uh, world here where we are fully aware of what is happening in an instant, and it goes out on, on news and, and Twitter and, and social media and all of that. Uh, some people, some pastors point to this event and they say that this is just more evidence that America is a racist country and racist to its core, and, and racism is horrible. And America is not, you know, 100% racist. You can, you can notice that because there are thousands and thousands of people around the country rallying around this issue and protesting against racism. Uh, it does exist in our country, and it shouldn't, but it's, it does. But that's just part of the problem. That's not the only issue in our nation. Our country is struggling with the effects of this virus the past few months, and then government overreach in some places. Uh, people have been isolated. They've been unemployed uh, for weeks and weeks, and then expected to survive on a $1,200 check from the government. And, you know, the country is at a breaking point. We're all agreed that racism is wrong and and peacefully protesting a good thing yet things have gotten off track the past several days these riots and looting and 
multiple cities every night. It is so discouraging. And our times right now are a lot like the times of Hosea. The Old Testament book of Hosea, it tells the story of the nation of Israel and how how they had left God and walked away from following God and they're chasing after idols and, and other gods or just living for themselves. It had been a couple hundred years since King David, uh, this wonderful great king, and then his son Solomon builds the temple, but that was a couple hundred years ago. And the, each generation, the, the nation of Israel had drifted further and further away from honoring God. And the people had not been following God's word. Uh, God loved his people, Israel, yet they had turned their backs on him. And that's why it says in Hosea chapter 4, verse 3, you know, chapter verse 1 and 2, there's all these things, these indictments against the people. And then in verse 3, that is why your land is in mourning and everyone is wasting away. Our land is in mourning for the same reasons. Let's go look at the, the charges here in verse 1 and 2. This, this sounds like a little bit of a legal setting here. God is bringing charges against Israel. And much of this applies to our culture today. Hear the word of the Lord, O people of Israel. The Lord has brought charges against you, saying, There's no faithfulness, no kindness, no knowledge of God in your land. You make vows and break them. You kill, steal, commit adultery. There's violence everywhere. Hosea is like the, the district attorney here. Here are the charges, and these charges are seen in our world today. There's no faithfulness, no kindness, no knowledge of God. He says, you make vows and you break them. People... People don't make commitments in our society like they used to. You know, it used to be, you, you kind of think back and, you, you know, maybe we idealize the past at times, but people could shake hands and agree on something. And now we have to have contracts and lawyers because individuals and companies don't keep their word. In relationships, people don't keep their vows, do they? Um, the, the, the rates are going higher and higher of people breaking their marriage vows. And there are some amazing single mothers out there who do a, an amazing job, but God's plan is for mom and dad to love each other and take care of their kids and raise them. And when that doesn't happen, we, we see the effects and, and it has a huge and negative effect on children when they're raised in a broken home setting. In our world, there's a, a lot of making of vows and breaking of vows. Those police officers in Minneapolis, they are, uh, they are now, all four of them have been charged for, for murder, of course, but also they broke their vows, the vows of police to protect and to serve. And it, it's distressing for police officers around our country just to see what other police did. They broke their vow. And then we see these other indictments for the people you, you kill and steal, commit adultery. There's violence everywhere. And we've seen that uh, in our country. And this word of the Lord in Hosea, it could be said of people in our day and age. Our, our current problems are not new problems. Because like I say, one of my little oh, sayings is, times change, but human nature does not change. We, we always fall into the same patterns and same sin. Human nature doesn't change. And there are racial issues, but, 
But even greater than that, there is a sin issue in our nation today. And this is what happens. We're seeing it on the news, and we see it here in Hosea too. This is what happens when people have fallen away from God. They have just walked away from God. Sin entered this world clear back with Adam and Eve and the, and, and the Garden of Eden, and since then the world hasn't been perfect. And it's full of sin and injustice. And this is why God sent Jesus. And this is why God calls his people to live to a higher standard. Hosea the prophet, he comes along and he tells people, this is why your land is in mourning. You've not been faithful to God. That's the real problem with our world. And what did Hosea say to the people in this condition? You turn the page, you go over to Hosea chapter 6. In Hosea chapter 6 verse 1, the prophet is preaching to the people and he says, Come, let us return to the Lord. Then in Hosea chapter 6, verse 3, it says, Oh, that we might know the Lord. Let us press on to know him. He will respond to us as surely as the, the arrival of the dawn or the coming of the rains in early spring. Oh, that we might know him. Let us press to know the Lord. We, we see the, our imperfect society, and no laws are going to change this imperfect world we live in. It only changes when we turn to the Lord, because you see, Jesus can change us from the inside out. He can change each and every person. And this is the call of the church, the call of God's people, the call of preachers and prophets all over. Come, let us return to the Lord. Oh, that we might know the Lord. Let us press on to know him. And that's the only thing that's really going to bring about lasting change in our world. I'm going to pray because that's what we need most of all. Lord God, we pray for our country. We pray for situation going on right now. And, and our hearts break over what took place in Minneapolis and, and injustice that takes place over and over and over again. Lord, help us to return to you. Let us press on to know you. Let us call others to know this amazing God who loves us and has a better way to live in this world so that we can live in this world, that your kingdom would come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord God, I pray that you bring about great revival in this country, that people would turn to you, for you're the only one that can change our past and can change our hearts. Lord Jesus, we need you. Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.